So let's get the fighters into the ring by welcoming into the uh, red corner. He fights out of Gothenburg, Muay Thai in Sweden. Please welcome Joachim Ha! And here's the opponent this evening in the blue corner, fighting out of the Mazak gym in Durham, England. It's Jamie So, ladies and gentlemen, we have three three-minute rounds of K1 rules in the 77 kilogram division. It's an international prestige of victory super fight. It's England versus Sweden. So, let's get the action started by once again welcoming into the red corner. He comes with a record of 28 wins, 18 losses. He fights out of Gothenburg, Muay Thai gym in Sweden. Once again in the red corner, please welcome Joaquin. Once again, facing him in the blue corner with a record of 27 wins. Seven losses from the Massac Gym in Durham, England. It's Jamie! Hey! Over to your referee. Sharp hand from Bait, deep from Bait. Hag just a bit out of distance there. Well, Hag, of course, a super experienced fighter, but he's super experienced in Muay Thai. And this fast start that kickboxing demands really does favor Bait. Yeah, definitely Bait is, is K1 through and through, so it's definitely his game. Deep from Bait, straight through the center there. So it's not so much the techniques of kickboxing that are different, right? It's the pacing and the, the emphasis on combination. Yeah, the pace definitely is a, is a massive thing. And obviously, you can't take away the clinch work and things like that. So it's, it is a different game. Yeah, Jimmy Bates just lighting them up with punches, punches, kicks, all thrown in combination. Bates looking in phenomenal shape. He always does. He always comes out looking like he's like a Michelangelo sculpture. <laughs> Good double jab with the right hand straight through the centre from Bates there. Hag seems like he just can't find his distance. A little bit tentative. Big hands there from Hag though, straight over the top. Slip from Bates. I think Hag may be there feeling that pressure. Felt like he wanted to clinch, then remembered. You can't do that in this format. Yeah. Like marching down again, looking for that clinch, and then realizing he can't do that. He can get the one knee, but then you're having to let go. Both guys tentative there. Teep straight through the center from Bates. 
There's a lot of respect here being shown, and a lot of respect from both guys beforehand. Both guys understand one another are dangerous opponents. They respect one another's power. Yeah, definitely. Them teeth from Jamie, Jamie Bates down the centre as well. I've sparred with Jamie, and they're horrible stabbing, piercing front kick straight through the centre. They are horrible, so that will be taking the wind out of his sails. He picks his legs up very, very well, Jamie, as well. Good jab from Bates. Off balancing Hag. Big hands coming over the top there from Bates. Now, normally Bates dwarfs his opponents in the ring, but Hag's a big man. Yeah, he's a big lump of a guy. Thick and same height. Thick set and same height. In the, like you say, he is a big guy. He's trying to march him down for that clinch, but it's not tie boxing, it's K1. He needs to remember that. That was a nice left hook there by Bates. Beautiful get, combination from Bates there. If it didn't wobble him, it gave him some team to about. Bates there. Oh, that was slick. Very, very good round for Bates. Started fast as he always does. Now you say this is his game. Hag still a little bit tentative, looking as if he's trying to march him down to, to get the clinch work. But obviously this is K1, it's not tie boxing. So it's not going to work in this game. So he needs to, to think of a different strategy for round two and three for me. I think the pace that Bates came out with there, it's going to be hard for anyone to deal with. He was just throwing down to one, punches, kicks, high kick, low kick, everything in combination. He barely put anything together that was less than three or four shots. Yeah, also, like you say, Bates, he picks his, uh, picks his feet up from any direction. Like you say, I've, I've been there and sparred with him. Them, them push kicks are absolutely... I piece. quit sparring because of Jamie Bates. Yeah. Last time I got kicked in the face, I said, that's it, threw my, threw my gloves in the bin, I'm too old. Yeah, once I remember I was sparring with Jamie and I went through a jab and he teeped me in the shoulder, my shoulder nearly went next door, you know, and I was like, oh my God. But he just picks them up, like, it's like a jab, it just teeps like a jab. Bates in the centre there, raring to go for round two. Round two. See what Hag brings to his arsenal in round number two. Body kick from Hag, it's a better start. Body kick from Hag again, they're good strong body kicks. Well, strong kicks, but Bates wasted no time returning the favour. Yeah, definitely, it was one for one there. Better activity though from Hag, he's still trying to walk down and get that knee. Good boxing there from Bates. Jab to the body from Bates. Great shots from Bates there down the centre, pushing Hag back. There's some more good flurry of shots. Again, it's those shots coming in combinations of three, four, five and more. Yeah, definitely. And then he just keeps him back with that push kick, which, like you say, is like a jab. It's awful. Good movement from Bates there. Great shots again. High kick just misses the head of Hag. Hag looks like he's getting a bit frustrated with the movement of Bates. Seems like he can't get his shots off. Good one, two from Bates there. This is, so Jimmy Bates, he isn't even a typical, a typical kickboxer. Like he's got a lot of boxing skill. He is, a, he is a professional boxer. And so he moves like a boxer all the time. He doesn't let people set up their kicks. He, was not, he will not stand yeah, in front of you. He's in and out, like you say. When he's out of distance there, he'll keep you back with a tee, but then it, and there you go, exactly that. Comes in with a high kick, then a turn back kick. He, he's throwing shots from all directions, and he's in and out like a boxer. And the fact that he's doing creative things like that, letting spinning techniques go, it shows he's feeling comfortable in there. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, he's, uh, he's got a massive array of um, combinations and techniques. I think, obviously, we're all friends of Jamie Bates here, and the big fans you can hear. Let's not uh, let's not forget to give credit to Hag oh, here. Oh, definitely. Let's not rule he's out Hag. The, he's in this fight, yeah. but he's being a big physical presence in the ring. He's not backing down to this pressure. Yeah, definitely. Big strong guy. When he throws his shots, they, they mean something. And like you say, it's, uh, he's always in the fight. It just seems like he can't get his rhythm off. It's a change in rhythms for him. It's hard for him in that his favourite weapons are the, are the elbow, which is of course taken away from him, 
and the knee, which operates differently when you can't do protracted clinches. Yeah, that's it. So it's not only that he can't he can't utilize them, but he has to think, don't do that. And that puts like a mental pause on you where it doesn't allow you to throw something else when you're thinking, don't do the thing that I'm inclined to. Definitely. Like you say, another great round for Bates. Picked up the win on that round, I would say. Like you say, Hag just seems like he can't get his motion going and can't get his rhythm. Bates is picking his shots and, and fighting his fight. He really is. Bates is looking great, but I have to give credit to Hag here again. Why has Bates not made that breakthrough punch or kick? Most people couldn't have stood up to that. He yeah. threw some tremendous shots here, and Hag's still standing there, being a presence in the ring, holding his feet. It's very impressive. Like you say, he's, he's a veteran of the, of the sport, not, not K1 as such, but the, the martial arts. He's obviously he's had a wealth of experience, so he knows how to deal with things and sort of stop Bates doing the things he wants to do. But obviously, Bates, obviously, this is his game. He's fighting very, very well and picking his shots perfectly. I can't see anything that's troubled him so far. So it's, it's he's just got to keep doing what he's doing for round number three. Hag's going to have to pull something out of the bag. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Look how fit Bates is. Yeah. Oh, he looks like he's barely even blown, and the output that he's done for these last two rounds without any sign of slowing down, just tremendous. Yeah, massively fast start from Bates there. Beautiful boxing combination coming through, followed by a kick. Lovely, there's that piece and front kick again. It just pushes him back. Bates is mean in business. He's wanting to uh, he's wanting to hurt him this round. Good combination there from Bates. Deep to the face, just misses Hag there from Bates. Hag around the back, but that's not a score move oh, in this format. Can't punch to the back of the head. And he's throwing his respect for not even trying that as well. A very disciplined fighter. Good right hook from Hag inside there. It's a strong presence, Hag. He looks the bigger of the two men, doesn't he? As we say, Bates is usually the bigger of the opponent, but... I think it's the way Bates holds his stance, too, you know, because the appearance of height is a little bit less than that Bates is in a, in a longer stance. Whereas yeah. Hag's got his feet closer together, a little bit squarer, which is kind of what's making him a little bit more hittable for those hand combinations. Yeah. Good right hand from Hag there. Hits the chin of Bates. Hand combination back from Bates, though. It's not letting him have any rest there. When they fall into a clinch, Bates puts his hands on his shoulders, shoves him away and says, yeah. no, let's go again. Let's get back to action. Coming in the final minute of round number three in this fight. Bates up on the scorecards, on the oh. official scorecards. Beautiful push kick from Bates there. And he gives him no respite, straight back on him with the hands. Yeah, beautiful. Again, Hag ending up in the clinch where Usually he likes to be. But obviously he can't in this K1 fight. Good overarm there from there. Bates straight over the top. But again, look at the way Hag takes it. Yeah, he just takes it and marches forward. Because Jamie Bates, everybody who sparred with him, held parts from him, knows he hits really, yeah, really hard. He's, he's a big puncher. He's got big power. And Hag's taking these shots incredibly well because some of them are landing flush and he's not even showing it. Just marching back down. Good jab from Hag there. One, two from Bates. Sweep from Hag there. Kicks the leg of Bates. And that's the third and final round over. Hag holds his hand up in the air. Well, I think that's signaling. I did a good job yeah. rather than I think I won. Yeah. That was, yeah. A, that was a pretty decisive victory. Definitely. Now, it wasn't one-way traffic, but there was just so much more volume coming yeah. from Bates there. He's so fast and so fit. The volume of action from Bates there was phenomenal. He looks in brilliant shape. I'd say that he always looks in good shape, but uh, he's looking very matured and, and strong there. Now you see, as we've seen in his action replays, 
good kicks from Hag there, but the combinations and, and the volume of shots from Bates was just uh, a lot more. Virtually everything Bates let go was highlight reel stuff. Look at that, gorgeous. Okay, so here we go to the officials. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for these gladiators. Come on. And after three heavy hitting rounds of K1, we go to the ringside judges, where they have reached the unanimous decision. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner in the blue corner, Jamie. Coming up shortly, ladies and gentlemen, we have our second installment of the Female Victory League Final.